13,915 pounds. This is one big, bad, painted beauty. Generators, slide awnings, loaded, loaded, loaded here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. A 36 KPTS Jayco Pinnacle that was originally Mr. Halet's own personal demo. It's one and only original owner, he used it for several seasons. Seems to have taken pretty fair care of it, and uh, they just decided that as much as they love it, it's just getting to be a lot for them to haul around, and they just want to downsize a little bit. That's the only reason it's here. It's just big, and they'd like to go a little bit smaller, maybe check out a few new campsites that this old big beauty couldn't quite fit into. There are certain coaches out there, they have that intangible it factor. And this, I've always felt, has it. Whatever it is, it's got it, and it's got a lot of it. The uh, A lot of manufacturers have built a, and been very successful with, a squished down version of this. Like the, the very popular 32R LTS Pinnacle in today's market, the Montana 3120. There's various Eagle and Cougar versions. At a glance, you're like, why do they have the same floor plan, but those are smaller and lighter and less money? It's because they're not, they don't have the size of this. This has an extended kitchen space. It's not a squished kitchen, it's an expanded kitchen. And the KPTS has always been a very kitchen focused open floor plan. This thing is awesome. And it starts right up top here. You see that uh, above our kitchen cooking facility, we have that roof vent fan to keep some airflow going. And we've got that very diesel pusher looking ceiling fixture. This was about the time a lot of manufacturers, it's like they started to have this competition of who could have the coolest looking ceiling fixture. And this is one of the first generations of whisper ducted air, so it's significantly quieter in here when you do uh, crank up that air conditioner. Now in today's world, you find a lot of rear sofas with a, uh, a side theater seat or a set of recliners. This predates that by about one season, but it would really not be too difficult to shift some things around to make that happen. The uh, entertainment is what I like to call kind of a no-neck wrecker. It's directly across from this big, beautiful theater sofa over here. And this one was truly built to be more couples-oriented. It's not hide-a-bed. That is a theater seat. So someone's going to say, what do you mean no-neck wrecker? The recliners are there. And the TV can swing out, by the way, to face those. I haven't done that in this uh, video right now, but it can do that. But those recliners can also twist to face it. So you choose where you want to sit. And no matter what, it's always a direct view at the entertainment. And you might have noticed we have that electric space heating fireplace below to give you some bonus heat without eating up your propane. And above that, we had the uh, residential ceiling fan. All of the windows are fully framed and trimmed out. And you can see how all the windows have those handy uh, day-night roller shades. I've left a couple up, a couple down to kind of give you the visual there. And every window opens for ventilation. Another thing that I've always liked on this floor plan, and it's something I focus on a lot, even in the new RVs today, is it just throws all of the windows over here on the camping side of the RV so that you get to enjoy that beautiful destination instead of looking at your neighbors or their campsite, you know? The uh, chairs here, what's kind of cool about these is they're a little bit higher back. And the previous owners did an awesome job of like when they did travel, they strapped everything down properly. You can see they kept the slip covers for those chairs so the wooden high backs weren't kind of click clacking into each other and denting one another up. And those atrium windows around that dining area, have if you kind of look behind the table, see how that window goes like all the way down to the floor? It just lets in a ton of light. And your entry door also, you might notice, does have its own window and shade. So you can get more light, more campsite visibility, or uh, more privacy. Part of the longer kitchen is this thing has an absolutely enormous island. It's rarely when the sink is not covered do you maintain good prep space on an island, but you see that's not the case here. And those cool little accent lights at the base of this thing, that's something that uh, Pinnacle has done a really good job about. It gives you the ability to be able to navigate this thing uh, kind of in the evening hours. Because it's it's really the kitchen that has always defined the 36 KPTS and not the living room. The original incarnation of this, the KP stood for kitchen pantry. It had a walk-in kitchen pantry that they kind of revised over the years and they instead just made it a, a little more traditional like cabinet style pantry like we're looking at here. So this is kind of like what I call generation two of the 36 KPTS. You've also got that handy coat closet right when you walk in the door there. And all of your important control stuff is kind of hidden away in case you have some little kiddos over something like that for the day. 
Now you might need a two or three step stool to get to some of that, but man, is that just glorious storage. Just glor glory edge? I don't know. Convection microwave oven. Uh, the larger residential uh, refrigerator, this one was built with more of like a park use in mind. At the time Mr. Halet had this, he actually uh, owned a seasonal site up in South Haven, Michigan. So, you know, it was effectively a getaway cottage for them. Uh, down below here, you can see that you've just got drawers galore. They just don't waste an opportunity for anything. And that top drawer, it's easy to miss. It actually has a separate little utensil kind of shelf drawer in there. A drawer inside of a drawer, as it were. And then, as if we didn't have enough pantry space already, you have a second pantry that is very large over here. I love how wide the door is. It's easy to access. And those are all adjustable shelves, so you can really kind of conform that to whatever you need. And then all the way around the entertainment center, above and uh, all the way down the sides, we've got some excellent, what I like to call, pantry tainment storage. And that handy little drawer right there, I think that's absolutely perfect for keeping things like remote controls uh, kind of, you know, on hand and, and where you want it. From there, we're just going to slide to the right and take a look at this, that, a second look actually at that big island. I love this little swing out kind of bonus pantry that they have right there. And that's pretty functional space actually. Like you look at it and you think, yeah, what could you really stick in there? You'd be surprised. Uh, you can actually pack quite a bit in here. It's also easy to miss, and I have to get right up close here. There are easy reach power outlets right on this island, so when it is like appliance time, you're good to go. And speaking of which, I mean, you know, we've already seen a ton of cabinet space in this thing, but you've got room down here for pots, pans, appliances, any little thing you want, and a built-in wastebasket makes it, uh, you know, so you don't have to have like Walmart bags tied to the uh, cabinet handles because I don't think you bought a pinnacle to use Walmart bags as a, uh, a waste basket. I'm just spitballing, but I feel pretty confident about that. Moving up here into the hallway, we're going to hit our dual entry bathroom. The uh, step in here, you see we've got our porcelain foot flush stool, and I love the dedicated in-bath uh, linen space so you don't have to do the nudist camp streak around. And up stairs in a Pinnacle or North Point. This is one of those areas that's easy to miss where they are different from a lot of brands. So it's nice that we have the bigger vent fan. It's nice that we have that skylight, but the entire upper deck is taller in a Pinnacle or a North Point, and that's an easy to miss thing. You, it, It's hard to kind of grasp that just from one of these videos, but if you're really big like me, you'll never have headroom issues in here. And here in the bathroom, you still have solid surface counters and that is a stainless, or pardon me, that is a stone cast sink. So even the bathroom sink is kind of like an upgraded fixture. Up here in the bedroom, you'll see the factory installed second air conditioner. So this has 30,000 BTUs of cooling power. And with that generator that's installed, I don't care where you park tonight. As long as you got gas, you're good to go. This was, uh, well, actually, no, it wasn't built with the king option. The king bed is standard in a pinnacle. A queen would actually be the swap out. I don't want to say upgrade, but the option. Now, another thing that's easy to miss here is the depth of that front closet. This cedar line closet is absolutely enormous. It's what they kind of called their uh, walk-in closet. Let me kick some light on in here. And you can see how we've got that like sort of dresser shelving on the left. There's two hanging bars. It looks like previous owners simply just had taken one down, but they kept the bar, which is nice. And I have always been very confused as to why those handheld Dysons did not prove more popular in the RV industry. They're lightweight, they're small, they're easy, they're strong. I, I've i always liked them. I never got why they weren't more popular. And you can see there is no washer dryer installed, but it does have a stackable ready washer dryer prep area, big bedroom window, and your bedroom TV, all factory original, all still present and accounted for. Something I should have mentioned in the kitchen is that all of our cabinet work is all hardwood. It's not a lumber core with a stained wrap. If you get your hands in here and you feel around like behind this, you can feel that this is actual stained wood. It's a higher grade construction that you find in a pinnacle. Something you don't usually get to see a lot of are these full paint packages in the used RV market. And one of the things that's really striking me about it is the way that it is masking the potential age of the unit because you know this is like a what is it a 15 or 16 I can't remember offhand but you can't tell it looks like it could be brand new it looks so good outside by comparison you don't run the risk with a full paint package like this of like 
a uh, a brown exterior starting to look aged or something like that. It doesn't experience the same weathering that a conventional fiberglass exterior might. That that paint doesn't just look good, it does help protect the RV long term. Kind of in the same way that your own vehicle doesn't tend to have uh, a great deal of weather fade on it, uh, the paint package on an RV will help keep this thing looking good and since it's painted, it's not like there's decals that are going to fail over time. You see that thing has that ridiculously large pass-through compartment. Up front we have that 5500 Onan generator that Mr. Halet decided to put in this, so if you want to go anywhere, anytime, you are good to go. We've got the uh, more ride suspension and pin box package to make this big beauty handle nicely down the road. And a real key thing, I believe I talked about it inside, but to mention it here again, it is a wide body RV and it's a 102 inch max width wide body. So this thing has, it's about as big as they can possibly get before you have to start getting into like <laughs> special licensing issues. You can see, like I said, we've got paint, generator, slide awnings, every, basically anything that you could do to this thing from the factory when it was built was essentially pretty much all done. Now. We've got the big drop frame storage that we saw from the other direction. And in case you're wondering what this thing is, by the way, the folks had an uh, auto uh, slider hitch, and that's the adapter plate that you need to make that thing work right there. But obviously, if you want to move it around otherwise, you need to pop that thing off, which is what we've done. Um, if you look up top here, you can see the uh, easy access controls to the six-point auto leveling system and a, a very nicely protected enclosed docking center right there. So our gate valves, everything is all heated, enclosed, protected. And one of the nice little pinnacle uh, differences here is that it's not just a heated enclosed underbelly. Of course, these have a very heavy insulation package. Your hot, cold camp rated here all day long. But it's fully skirted. You don't have uh, exposure areas beside the I-beams. The entire thing is enclosed, skirted, protected so that you don't have, you're just not subject to those thermal gaps like a lot of things could be. Now I also want to make mention out here, it's easier to see from the outside. Not only is this a wider body, that is a deeper bedroom slide. That's one of the reasons that bedroom feels bigger because the slide is deeper and the body is wider so you have so much more room to walk around the bed here. As we slide down the rear wall, a couple things to point out. I like the fact that they use double tail lights on this. If you need to stop in a hurry, it makes it more visible to the people behind you, which means far less likely someone's gonna bump into the back of this thing if you have to make like a quick emergency stop on the highway. Back here in this corner, you do have a 12 volt powered uh, extension and retraction 50 amp cord reel. So you don't have to lug that big heavy sucker all over the place and it's in the back corner of the RV where most hookups are going to be located. Uh, Mr. Halet had always been a proponent of having these little uh, receiver hitches factory installed on the back of RVs and for good reason. Um, he, uh, he's not like a super bike riding enthusiast or anything like that, but he did always like to have a couple bikes to be able to kind of cruise around the campgrounds or something local to get a sort of look and feel for everything around there. But something he noticed in one of his adventures before he started using a bike rack was that occasionally his bicycles would find a way to magically move themselves. Not that he would use them, and I think someone would take a joyride and then come back with them. Well, when he started mounting them on a bike rack, it just became a little too difficult for things like that to happen. Now in today's market, what you'll find a lot of are those more ride stable steps, but looking at the entry door, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to apply a set of those to this RV if you are so inclined. Another thing that's kind of handy is it does have a, uh, a touchpad where you can key in a code to throw the deadbolt on this thing. So if you do want to do something like go on a bike ride or if you want to go river tubing or something like that, you want to do a thing where you're, you don't want to risk losing your keys or oops, you accidentally forgot them inside. Well, you can just punch in your little deadbolt code kind of like the door of a vehicle and never have to worry about it. It's just, it's just kind of simple, smart and easy. Beautiful day. And this would normally be a good kind of day to get up on top of a roof to do some routine care, maintenance, and cleaning. But it looks like the previous owners were already over all over that one. Uh, the, the roof membrane itself, the seals look absolutely fantastic. This is all original factory sealant, still in place, still looking good. Now, the, uh, the, the two roof vents that we're looking at in that skylight, they have definitely oxidized. I know that there are rubbing compounds you can put on those to get uh, a bulk of that out, especially here over the bathroom skylight where you do want some light to exchange. But overall, 
I don't think you could ask the roof of this thing to look much better. And you can see the previous owners also did add on a, uh, a big kingdom like uh, antenna system on this. So, I mean, you know, dual airs, the wide body, the satellite, this, this is about as loaded as something this age this year is going to get. So, I, uh, I, I don't see stuff like this come through the lot very often, ladies and gentlemen. This is the kind of thing that typically people keep for dozens of years until they're ready to just be done. These folks are just one of the few exceptions that they bought their last RV that turned out to not be their last RV. You know, it's kind of one of those things. So give us a call. Hitching Pieces Parts, Trades Finance, Truck and Trailer Package, Deals, RV Delivery, and everything between. We do it all. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bit of a windy one. Beautiful day, though.